So guys, how are you? Welcome to Chord Pairs. And today's Chord Pairs uh, consist of C7 to D7, which is going to be the chord form part of this lesson in part one. Part two is going to use open position, which is playing within the first three frets and also using open strings. So the chord form idea on the C chord, in this case the C7 chord in part one, is that we move one shape up the strings to get the next chord, which in this case is D7, but the left hand stays on the same set of strings. With the C7 to, sorry, with the G7 to C chord, this section, part two, we stay within the first three frets and we move in that location only. So the first part, we move up the strings. The second part, we stay in position. We don't move any further than this location, okay? So that's the idea. And to get you into the lesson, let's get you into the score. And here it is. And we're gonna talk about the different chords. You can see here in this chord, the C7 and the D7, the shape of the hand is the same. In fact, all the chords have a similar hand shape to them. You can see the sort of curvy bit going on. If we go back to the C chord, which that particular C chord is built into this shape here, but we have an additional finger. So four fingers for the first two chords and the last two chords only use three fingers, okay? Now, there's different notes within each of these chords. You can see here we have C, E, B flat, and C, and your fingering is nice and big, so you can see how that all situates. The colored circles here are the root tones of the chords, which are the namesakes of the chords, and the black lettering is the additional notes within the chord, and that's the situation with C7. So C, E, G, B flat is the spelling of a C7 chord, but we don't have a G in this particular version. And that's the tone we can leave out. We can leave out what's called the fifth of the chord that can be deleted from any dominant seventh chord, which is what the C7 chord is. It's known as a dominant seventh chord. But our main thing is not that information so much right off the bat, but the movement of the hand from chord to chord. Here's our D7. You can see here we've abandoned the first three frets and move the hand up to the third fret. The first finger marks off the third fret location. And the spelling D F sharp A C is the spelling of a D7 chord. We don't have the A, so we're left with these notes, D, F sharp, and C. And of course you can see these are the root tones of the chord, and these are the additional notes added in for that chord. But the fingering is the same, and the movement is similar to the first chord. First you know, in this case, strings five, four, three, and two, we're staying on those strings and just simply moving the hand from first fret with that shape to the third fret. All right, so that's your chords for the first half, the forms, okay? You get the mobility of the same hand shape. That's the form of the chord that gives you that type of chord. And on the second half, part two, G7 to C, we're staying within the first three frets. Here's our G7 chord. So the colored circle here is the root of the chord. There it is. And the remaining tones are the other notes. G, B, D, F is the spelling of a G7 chord. And we can see what we have in the lettering underneath. G and B, D, G, B, F. So got two Gs, two Bs, one D, one F. That's the situation there. And we're playing all six strings with the right hand. With the C7, D7 chords, we're playing the inside strings. We're skipping both low and high E strings. And here's your C chord leaving out the sixth string, we're not playing it. C, E, and G is the spelling of a C chord, which is a triad actually. So we have two Cs, two Es, and one G in that particular version of the chord. All right, so strum pattern for the right hand for the first half is a little interesting. We have, for the C7 chord, we have all down strums going on, but when we go to D7 chord, we actually have a change of direction with the right hand, okay? The way an eighth note triplet, which is what this rhythm is, it's broken up with a rest in between. Typically with an eighth note triplet, it's three pulses inside one pulse, which is one, two, three, four. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four. And uh, that's a full on eighth note triplet. But with this one, we have a rest on the end of every grouping of triplets. So we have one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, as opposed to one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and, uh, which will be a full eighth note triplet, but we don't have that in this example. And you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear this on the playback. 
It's one, rest, a, uh, two, rest, a, uh, three, rest, a, uh, four, rest, a. Uh. And when you get to that particular part of the tune, the sound cuts out. You're going to hear that in the playback. And on the D7 chord, the same holds true. So we have the same strum pattern all the way throughout. The thing that's different is the right hand direction when you get to the D7 chord. I threw this in just to add a little variety in the right hand, but by all means, you can stay with this throughout the entire strum pattern. You can do all down strums. Down, 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 down. On the opposite side, on D7 chord, we have down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you can train, you can change into that strum pattern at that part of the tune if you want to. It's, it's written in, but by all means, if this feels more comfortable on measures two and three, doing all downward directions for the right hand, stay with that. And if you want to change direction, you can go with that too, of course, and make that part of the entire part one for your strum pattern. So here's some options. Part two, in contrast, we have the same strum pattern all the way throughout. We have a 16th note grouping, which is uh, one E and a two, three, four. So the beat is broken up into four parts there and there's more activity. So we have more space on the first part rhythmically for the, the chords and the strumming. On the second half, there's more activity, more filled in per beat. We have four parts happening per beat. They're grouped that way. So we have one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh, which is the count. Right hand goes down, up, 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 down, up. And it's gonna sound faster when you hear the playback, okay? So the right hand's moving constantly when you get into that strum pattern. And it works the same for page two on the C chord. So same exact strum pattern, it feels the same, different chords. The thing that we'll talk about too is where to lift the hand off from chord to chord. In this particular case, if you do the 16th notes, you're lifting your left hand off at this moment and you're placing it back down on this moment. That's the key to the smoothness of the chord changes is where you lift your left hand and when you lift your left hand, okay? Same thing applies to the first half. And here, I'm going from C7 in this measure to a D7 chord. Okay, even though there's no letter here, the chord stays the same. C7, three measures two and three. D7, three measures four and five, okay? So in this particular part here, when you go back to repeat the section of the tune, you're lifting your left hand off here. It should be open strings, and I actually indicated not open strings. So here is the moment where you wanna lift. You wanna lift in this area, okay? And then you place your hand back down when you get to here, your left hand that is, okay? And it's a tricky part there too. If you do all um, down and up through here, you know the up strum is going to grab the open strings before you get back to your down strum in measure two. All right, so that's the situation. A little talk through of the chart. Let's hear the thing and see what it sounds like. Excuse me. Here it comes. So I think on the first playthrough, this part got cut off. So let me just do the first half for you again, all right? So you get to see the measures scrolling through. This part was kind of cut off earlier. So let me just do one more playthrough on this 
so you get to hear what's up. All right, one more time. First half again. Two, a three, a four. There you go. So that's that's the playthrough again with that eighth note triplet scene. Okay, so that's the deal. That's how it all works out. Let me get out of the screen share. All right. So that's the whole thing. And then going back to the point of lift off, where you lift things off between the C seven and the D seven chord. So say if you do all the strums with down strums. For that particular way of playing through the chords, I didn't do too much of a lift. I actually kind of kept the tones of the chords singing out. You know, I didn't really actually get any open string action. All right. But on the second half, when you do the G7 to the C chord, that's a little bit more of a thing where you want to lift off because the right hand's are much more active. So if you're going to do any kind of lifting, the busier the rhythm, that's kind of where you want to plan where you lift your hand off the strings, right? So if I play the G7 to the C chord, I'll do the collection as is, one E and a two E and a three E and a G7 chord. Two, three, four, one, two, get ready to lift right here. Two, three, four, one, two, get ready to lift right here. So you can see what I did there on the second bar of the chord, G7 on the one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. On that part, on that last up strum, you lift your left hand and move to the next chord, which is in this case, the C chord. So when you get to one, beat one, you have a down strum and your chords in place, okay? That's the key to the whole thing. Tempo wise, 50 might feel very quick on that second part. So you probably want to get the metronome out and slow it down. Or on the video itself here, when it's up, you can actually go to the settings and change the playback speed of the video right on the YouTube channel, right on the video, okay? So you can do that and that'll actually give you a chance to kind of keep up with that 16th note figure in particular, okay? So you have a constant flow on part two of rhythm. On part one, it feels a little more disjunct, a little more herky-jerky right, to, for sake of or for lack of a better term um, try it out and see how it goes i think you'll have a great time with it some different challenges in this particular study so uh, feel free to play through it and if you got any comments or difficulties feel free to comment below the video hey you had a problem with such and such and i can address it right within the comments or i can do a separate video about any kind of problems that you guys may have with the, with the chart so there you go guys that's the core pairs for today and if you like the video, feel free to like the video and subscribe as well. And thank you for all the new subscribers that have joined and uh, appreciate it. And I'm here to help as always. I try to say it on every video. So enjoy that chord pairs video and uh, score and all that good stuff. So hope this helps you out and we'll see you on the next video.